hello and welcome to our latest London Southeast CEO interview. We're joined today by Simon Oddy, CEO at AIM listed Europa Oil and Gas, who have a diversified portfolio of multi stage hydrocarbon assets. Europa have just farmed into the Serenity Field in the outer Murray Firth, as uh, Europa followers no doubt know, and uh, I3G are operators there, and that spuds in September. So that's a very exciting time to be speaking to you, Simon. Indeed, yeah. I mean, it's very timely actually for us um, because we have Serenity Spud, as you say, coming up in um, um, in the very early days of, of September, and uh, we're on uh, on plan, on track to do that. Um, the you know we're following the activities of the rig on its previous well, and uh, it looks uh, uh, as if those are on track. So uh, yeah, we've got some exciting news flow coming uh, in the run up to that. And of course, uh, during the, uh, the drilling of that uh, well, we've also got um, uh, another uh, important development, which is a wrestle, uh, which is Onshore UK. I think you could argue, Donald, that these Serenity and, and wrestle are kind of our twin pistons of growth at the moment. Um, I, I wouldn't disagree, Simon. Uh, both, um, uh, one onshore, one offshore, uh, both uh, in the fairly sort of short to medium term, in fact, wrestle in the very short term, um, and both delivering uh, significant value for Europa and for the shareholders. Okay, let me, let me stop you there, Simon. I, I can see that Europa have a range of quality assets and are clearly very ambitious. So what makes you think you, you can become a much larger hydrocarbon business? You mentioned wrestle, uh, you mentioned, you mentioned uh, Serenity as being your pistons of growth. Uh, tell us more. Yeah, um, Serenity, which is, I, I think, the major asset for Europa uh, at the moment. Um, Serenity is uh, an offshore discovered uh, oil field already. Um, it's an appraisal well that we're drilling. In other words, we're going to try to determine uh, how much larger it is than, than currently, but, but at current prices, um, you know, we've likely got a commercial development there right now before we even spud, uh, which is a very nice position to be in. So we're really looking at, um, at increasing the size of it uh, and increasing our knowledge of it. Uh, it's in an area which is, uh, which is well known, it's uh, Central North Sea, um, um, it, Murray Firth area, it's next to a discovered uh, uh, oil field and also a producing oil field at Blake, which is being produced by Repsol Sinopec. Um, and as they say, if you want to find oil, if you look next to existing oil fields, you, you usually increase your chances. I've but heard I mean, that many times, Simon. <laughs> but I mean, you know, jokes aside, um, from the point of view of infrastructure, uh, it's important that any uh, um, development that we uh, bring to uh, bring to the fore here actually uses existing infrastructure, uses existing um, uh, floating production vessel as it is in, in the case of the Blake field, um, and um, uses uh, uh, ex existing pipelines uh, as it would be if we were to do a subsea development uh, over um, adjacent discoveries. So, uh, you know, that's very effective. And the important, the other important thing, um, Donald, is that. Um, is that any development is conducted by a reputable operator. And I3 Energy, uh, who are also, of course, AIM listed, um, uh, have um, uh, a, a track record of developments, um, both uh, uh, mainly actually in Canada, but, uh, but also lot, they've done a lot of activities here in the UK. Um, and we feel very comfortable actually being in a partnership uh, whereby they are the operator. Um, the partnership will be, uh, or is, 75% uh, sign up, uh, sorry, 75% I3 Energy and 25% Europa. Uh, it's a two-partner um, joint venture, which is a nice size to be, uh, because it means we can get things done quickly. Uh, and most importantly, we can take decisions quickly. Um, when you're drilling a well and you have decisions about, you know, whether to, um, you know, what, depth you're going to drill to, whether you're going to sidetrack, you know, what the results of any uh, data coming or the, the, the analysis of any data coming back is, it's important to be able to take decisions quickly. 
Okay. So Serenity is the one that we're, we're really very excited about at the moment. But going in parallel with that um, is the sort of continuing delivery of Wrestle. I mean, Wrestle has turned out to be an extraordinary field. Uh, the, the well that we have on Wrestle is one of the largest producers onshore in the UK right now. Uh, it's produced at multiples of its uh, expected potential. Uh, it's producing with uh, pure oil, no water production, um, uh, fairly rock steady uh, production and gas oil, uh, gas oil ratio, um, and very little drop of, uh, of wellhead flowing pressure. So, you know, it, it's a great well. And um, uh, what it does uh, show is that there's actually additional volumes there, there's additional potential there. And the exciting bit of what we're doing uh, now is getting after that existing potential. potential. So why, um, the, why the change in focus, Simon? You, you, a year ago, you were an explorer. Now it's wrestle, now it's serenity, and it's more appraisal and, and, and already producing. So why that change in focus? Um, well, uh, it's very simple, really, Donald. Uh, exploration um, has changed nature since COVID. Um, the, the deep water um sort of harder to get at reserves whilst they're extensive and 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 uh, uh and can be company makers of course um the the majors are less uh, interested in drilling those right now more interested in developing uh smaller um accumulations which are closer to infrastructure in areas which are politic st politically stable and 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 predictable um, so farming out uh, these deep water prospects uh, has become more difficult. Um, and also, it's always been difficult to know what the timing is on these things. You know, how fast can you farm them out? How fast can you bring them on to? Uh, can you get them drilled? Can you, can you develop them? Uh, it's rather a long game. Uh, and it's, it's proved much more effective for a company the size of Europa to actually bring some shorter term uh, assets to the fore, like Serenity, where we know we're going to drill it in September. We know we're going to have a result 30 days later or thereabouts. And then we know we're into development planning. So there are not um, the uncertainties associated with large farm out uh, projects. So it's really balancing up the portfolio. Um, it's, it's broadening the portfolio and um, improving the deal flow and improving the news flow. And if you tell us a wee bit more about the, the terms of the carry arrangement that you've got with, the, with I3 Energy, and in particular, this is, this is a, a, a fascinating answer for me, why they chose to partner with you? Because they could have gone with people with deeper pockets. Yes, indeed. I mean, it's a question I'm often, often asked, actually. Um, and to perhaps take those in the, in, in the opposite order to which you pose them. Um, Donald. Uh, the the um, the reason I three have, have partnered with us is very largely down to our technical teams. Uh, we have we have a very experienced technical team in Europa. Um, a lot of experience working in the North Sea. A lot of experience working with different operators. Um, and you know our our guys are well known in the industry. They're well known for their uh, well respected for their integrity and experience. And it was quite clear during the uh, evaluation process um, when we were working with the I3 uh, technical team that, you know, that there was a good synergy. There was a good meeting of minds. There was a good debate and uh, most importantly, good results coming out of that. And a, one example of that was actually the well location that we're drilling. Um, that actually was shifted uh, after um, discussions and analyses by the two technical teams. Um, and we came up with a location which was optimum for both of us. And that, you know, that not only shows that we've had the technical ability and, and, and um, uh, wherewithal to be able to, to do the analysis properly, but it, but it reflects very well on I3 as well, because it shows that they, they're willing to have the flexibility to listen to what um, the partner's arguments are. And, you know, if they agree with them, to make adjustments accordingly. 
Not all operators would do that. So, you know, the, the synergy is very good. Um, going back to the actual deal itself, um, we uh, acquired a 25% interest in the Serenity Block 1323C uh, by drilling uh, a promoted well, which is this, this well that's coming up, to 1.85 to 1 promote, which, you know, in simple terms means that uh, we're paying 46.25% of the well uh, up to a cap, gross uh, cap of 15 million pounds to earn that 25%. So it's, it's a standard farm out uh, or farm in arrangement where we pay an additional amount to, to, um, to uh, earn our share in the license. Okay, and uh, what's the degree of risk? Uh, you mentioned that you were almost, almost at the stage of, of having a, finding enough oil for a standalone development. Um, a little bit more, more uh, detail yeah, on I that, mean, please. It, it's low risk. I mean, this is, this is appraisal, um, uh, not exploration. In other words, there's already a discovery there. Um, and we're looking at delineating or extending the definition, the size of that discovery. So we put it, it it's about 50-50. It's, it, you know, it's about 50%, the chance of success, um, which, you know, for an appraisal well is, um, you know, is, is, is reasonably average. Um, uh, and it's, uh, should we, in this location, uh, should we prove up a positive result, as I hope and expect we will, um, at the top end, we could be looking at, in gross terms, you know, getting on for a billion dollars of value here. I mean, it, it, it's significant, uh, a, a significant discovery. And of course, to a company the size of Europa, um, this, you know, I would expect would move the needle, so to speak, quite extensively. So it's a big one for us. Uh, uh, trans it's a big transformational one. was the term that people that, like I use. <laughs> Indeed. Potentially uh, indeed. transformational. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and that's before you look at the, uh, the possible types of development. I mean, you know, can extend uh, all the way from a subsea tieback uh, to existing facilities to a full uh, standalone um, floating production vessel. So, you know, this is, a, this is a great potential to be able to play into to have all of that upside whilst still having a commercial discovery you know, right now before we even spoke. And it's probably worth reminding people that you actually, between all your different assets, have around 300 uh, barrels of, of, of oil a day uh, revenue, which accrues. That's right. Uh, that's all from our onshore production, uh, predominantly from Wrestle, uh, where we've got 30% uh, share of the Wrestle field. Um, uh, but also from our own operated production, uh, West Fursby, Crosby Warren, um, and um, another field called Wisby. So, you know, we've got a balance, if you like. We've got different production sites um, uh, contributing to that 300 miles a day, which, which itself gives a sort of inherent prote protection because if one goes off stream uh, for maintenance, as happens at this time of year, uh, it, it doesn't sort of, you know, cause a de very detrimental effect on our, on our income revenue. But it's a nice, so, yeah, a nice earner for you, isn't it? Well, indeed, well, that 300 miles a day, I mean, particularly at current prices, um, you know, funds the business very nicely. Um, and uh, in particular, I suppose it funds our, our overhead, it funds our, our staffing costs, and uh, obviously gives us a very healthy cash flow um, to be able to, uh, to plan things like the Serenity uh, well and future Serenity developments. But there are, there are plans for a, 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 a for Wrestle to go in a different direction. Peniston is a, a, a whole new whole new uh, development. I understand. Could you tell us more about Peniston? Yeah, um, the Peniston uh, was tested by the the well that's on production um, back sort of six years ago thereabouts, um, uh, but it wasn't developed at that stage because this well is not at the optimum location for developing the Peniston. Uh, since then, um, and, and in fact, very recently, we've completed a full uh, technical study with, um, with probably, you know, one of the best consultants in the business called ERCE, um, 
We've done a complete simulation study on, on Penniston. We've come up with a development plan through that. And in fact, I, I wish I could tell you more, but we're right in the throes of technical meetings now to determine the development plan for the Penniston field, um, which you know we hope to be able to announce in, in the coming weeks. But you presumably, uh, have, presumably therefore have high hopes? Well, it, it's more than hopes. Um, you know, we've got discovered again, discovered reserve there. There's um, over a million barrels, one and a half million barrels of oil um, at the mid case contingent resources uh, on a gross basis in the Penniston flags and um, two billion cubic feet of gas. And of course, two, two billion cubic feet of gas onshore, um, you know, close to, to uh, sort of in, in, in um, uh, North Lincolnshire, Northamptonshire, um, it is a very good and a very effective resource needed by the country uh, right now. So we're anxious to get on with it. The other part of, of, of the work that we're planning as well is, um, uh, is tying the gas production from the existing well uh, into uh, either nearby gas trunk lines um, or into uh, electricity lines. So um, utilizing the gas um, either through power generation or, or, or through gas export. So, you know, that link up uh, of the existing uh, well, which is, as I said, which I've talked about is producing very well, uh, will enable us to um, not only to export gas, but actually to increase the rate on the existing well. I mean, existing wells producing about 700, 750 barrels a day at the moment. Uh, we reckon if we can export the gas, um, utilize the gas, we can get that rate up to about 1,300 barrels a day. So, you know, you really sort of 1,300 barrels for an onshore UK producer at the moment is, is you know, is really going some. So we're keen to do that. So all of those things are being planned right now. So it's, watch this space, I think, is the word. Fantastic. I mean, there are simply too many things to, to be talking to you about all at the same time. But this is an important one. So let me talk you through offshore Ireland. Uh, before we uh, came on air, you were saying that that was once the largest holding that, that uh, Europa actually had. So you, you have a significant uh, uh, stake in offshore Ireland. Tell, tell us about that and the fact that it's next door to Corrib Gasfield, which of course has been producing gas for Ireland for a very long time. Uh, put all that in context for us. Yeah, the, the, the license that we have now um, uh, is a gas exploration license uh, and it is the it, it's, it's adjacent, right? It, it's adjacent to the Corrib uh, gas field, which is the only producing gas field in Ireland. Now that produces uh, through a pipeline on, onto the west coast, um, uh, to the west coast of Ireland. Um, and our uh, license, which, um, which is 419, it's called 4 slash 19, uh, has a one and a half TCF um, accumulation there at very low risk. Again, we're looking at uh, sort of, you know, one third to a half chance of success, uh, very low risk for exploration. And the reason it's so it's low risk is that there's already a small discovery on our block, which was which was made by Shell. Um, and it's it's the same formation as Corrib. And Corrib has been producing for many years um, from from this formation and simply. <laughs> Um, it's a matter of tying this back to Corrib subsea. Uh, so it'd be a, a network of pipelines subsea, nothing to be seen on the surface at all, no emissions of surface um, on site whatsoever, um, exported through an existing uh, pipeline and to an existing terminal. Uh, to put it in context, one and a half TCF on current figures is enough to power um, uh, all Ireland's domestic requirement for 17 years. So it's major. This is big. <laughs> Good Lord. And what are the next steps there? Are you looking for a farming partner? Um, what yes, what we're doing, um, we're in the process and, and we put out an announcement recently saying that uh, that we, uh, are, are, we have applied for an extension to that licence um, from the Irish government uh, that uh, uh, we would, during that extension, hope to do Put some finishing touches to our technical work um, and most importantly 
um, a tractor farming partner uh, to come and essentially farm in, to, 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 to farm in for a, a share of the equity in the way that we're doing in Serenity, but the other way around. But they would pay essentially all of the cost of the well and leave uh, Europa with, uh, with, a working, um, uh, with, with a working a working interest in the joint venture. So it will be a no cost to Europa or of course our shareholders, um, uh, but we would pick up the benefit um, when and if this, this farming well is drilled. So we're not, in terms of farming, we're not, um, we're not by any means there on the farming yet. We need to secure the extension first. But once we've got the extension, um, we're pretty confident uh, that we've got something then which is, which is really very marketable. And I mean, look at the state of, of gas, European gas, um, at the moment over the next few months, to be able to produce indigenous gas, which has lower emissions than bringing gas from Qatar, US or whatever, um, domestic gas and put it straight into the Irish gas system is very attractive uh, to, to, to them. And of course, very attractive to us as a company. Understood. Uh, a, a point well made, Simon. <laughs> Uh, Morocco, tell us, tell us what you're up to in Morocco. Off, off, you have an offshore license there, is that right? Yes, um, Morocco is, uh, I suppose, what I referred to earlier in this interview um, as an offshore um, high impact uh, oil exploration license. Um, we would need to farm that out to get it drilled. It's in deep water, uh, but it's very high prospectivity. Uh, we're looking at, you know, we've already mapped over uh, well over a billion barrels of uh, potentially recoverable resource. So it's big, um, it's oil, and uh, Morocco is perhaps more associated with gas onshore uh, than it has been with oil offshore. Um, but companies have tried, including Shell, to find oil offshore and, you know, we think we have the, the answer uh, as to why it so far hasn't been discovered. Um, but but uh, we believe it's, it's prospective and uh, we're hoping to attract a farm in partner. It's not easy at the moment, but uh, we're doing our best. Okay. Now, Europa, uh, I, I, I have to say that every company I ever interview say that they have the best management team. And the, and the best technical team and the best and, and do, all doing great things. Uh, but put my cynicism to one side, uh, because sometimes, to be fair, it is actually true. <laughs> and I suspect in your case, it is, it is highly true. So do tell us, tell us about your, 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 your team. You've been CEO there for Europa for two years and clearly you're doing, you know, bringing a lot of positive change and energy to the business. Tell us all. <laughs> I think in summary, I call our team small but perfectly formed. Uh, we have um, a small crack team uh, headed by a, a very well experienced and uh, uh, extensive um, uh, board of directors. Um, our chairman is, is XShell, X Enterprise. Um, uh, our new finance director, um, Will Holland is ex Macquarie, very experienced in finance, very, very well known in the city. Um, uh, uh, our uh, uh, non exec directors, um, Stephen Williams, who's um, a co CEO with Rehabold, uh, very well known in the business, um, uh, done a lot of MA activity in his time, comes from a finance, uh, very much a finance background. Um, young, full of energy, um, and uh, not only that, but very successful. <laughs> and very successful, yes. And all I'm the glad, jobs. <laughs> I'm glad you popped that in. Um, and uh, and also William Arlefeld, who was one of the original uh, financiers, uh, well, the original investors, still a large investor in Europa, but has been very supportive over the years and qualified petroleum engineer himself. Um, always had very constructive comments to make about anything that we're 
doing on the MP in the MP side. So I do stand so, corrected. If I may say, I stand corrected. You do actually have a top team. <laughs> yeah. um, and then um, when you look at the uh, the technical team, uh, we've we've got um, several people who uh, used to work together at Enterprise Oil. Um, I was actually also at Enterprise Oil at the time that they were there. Um, uh, yeah, these guys are well respected very experienced uh, they've worked in 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 the area that the, the areas that we're working in ireland morocco and of course increasingly now the uk ukcs uk offshore um there is as i've, I've said they, they they're, they're known in the business they can call on additional resources when and as required um and frankly we couldn't ask for a better technical team than them and it was really i you know, if I, if I can put the uh, the credit on them actually for for landing the uh, the Serenity deal, it, it was basically the strength of of their expertise, knowledge, and their ability to work uh, with other technical teams that really landed that deal for us. So, yeah, you know, we've got as I said, small and perfectly formed. Um, it's just what we need. We can move quickly. Uh, we can move much quicker than larger companies who've got much larger technical uh, teams. We don't have uh, layers of management. We can make decisions very quickly. And, and that's, I think, Donald, that's what's important for a company that's really going to grow, grow and go places. Okay, my final uh, uh, question for you, and a, a fairly brief answer from you, please, if I may, Simon, because we're running out of time here. So yeah. what, news, what news flow do you expect in the next six months or so? Well, first and foremost, it's going to be serenity uh, because we'll be spudding within a month uh, and there will be a constant uh, news flow from that as it drills. It's a 30 day well, so we're going to have a result fairly quickly. Um, secondly, it'll be wrestle uh, and the work that we're doing at the moment, the technical meetings we're involved in at the moment, planning the Peniston development and importantly, planning the gas export uh, routes from the existing uh, existing field, the existing well. Um, and then the exploration initiatives in Ireland, farm out initiatives basically in Ireland, hope to have an announcement to make on, on the uh, extension in Ireland, of course, um, and the farm out activity that we're uh, under, that is underway in Morocco. Okay. Simon Roddy, CEO of Europa Oil & Gas, thank you so much for that. That's an absolutely fantastic update. Uh, I need to dive in and look at that all over again, I have to say. Um, for free data and our chat boards on Europa, please go to the Europa pages on London Southeast. You'll uh, find lots of information on there. And to see more interviews like this one, please subscribe to the London Southeast YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and please do stay safe.